The following organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series. Is that the last of it? Wow, that's a lot of soy. Ahoy, mate. Is that some precious cargo you're loading? What? Oh, you mean this stuff. Nah, it's only ballast for loading in the bottom of the ship. We're sailing back to America, and the Pacific can get pretty rough out there. Heavy ballast keeps us from tipping in the wind. Oh, you dropped a few. Hmm, looks like a... a pea. What is it? Not a pea, more of a bean. It's called a soybean. People in China eat the beans out of it, but I'm not so sure. If you're not eating them, then why are you loading all of that? This ballast is cheaper than, well, beans. And some people back home are trying to do different things with them. Go figure. These look really interesting to me. It's almost like they're begging for something special to do. Do you mind if I sail with you? No problem. But you'll have to share your cabin with a few bags of these as we set sail into the outdoors. Arr! actually native to Asia, where they've been grown and eaten for over 5,000 years. They finally made their way to America in the late 1700s, when sailors loaded the lower compartment of their ships with heavy bags of soybeans. The soybeans were cheap and helped stabilize the ship on rough seas. Once the ships arrived in America, they offloaded the soybeans, loaded new cargo, and then set sail back out onto the high seas. Hmm, now what do we do with all these soybeans? It didn't take long to figure that out. In the 1800s, American farmers began growing soy, and some even started making soy sauce out of them. But it took one very special American chemist to help people realize the amazing secrets of soy. I just don't get it. Each year, my fields have been yielding less and less cotton. The rain has been good, and we haven't had any insects eating the crops. Mr. Carver, got any ideas what it could be? Well, what you've got here is monoculture. A what? What did you plant last year? Cotton. What did you plant this year? Cotton. OK, so what do you plan to grow next year? Cotton. That's the thing. You keep growing the same single crop year after year. How do you think that affects the soil? I don't know. Not too good, I guess. When you keep growing the same single crop season after season, it depletes the nutrients in the soil. Have you ever considered crop rotation? Give your soil a break from cotton and give it something that returns the nutrients to the soil, like soybeans. George Washington Carver's ideas about crop rotation were based on the idea that plants need certain vital nutrients to grow, like nitrogen, which they need to get from the soil. There's a limited amount of nitrogen in the soil. Once the plant sees it up, it needs to be replenished in the soil. And that's where soybeans save the day. Unlike most plants that only take nitrogen from the soil, legumes can convert nitrogen from the air into nitrogen in the soil. So by alternating the crops of cotton and soybeans, the nitrogen in the soil gets replenished and the plant gets all the nutrients it needs to grow healthier. Oh! Now I get it. While farmers were catching on to the importance of crop rotation using soybeans, one of America's great inventors began exploring the possibilities of this magic little bean. Back in the 1930s, Henry Ford encouraged his research teams to develop different uses for soybean products in the automobiles he built. They developed car paints, oils, and even plastics from soy. But Henry Ford didn't stop there. 
He researched and promoted all kinds of industrial and food products made from soy, including soy milk, whipped topping, and ice cream. In no time, America began discovering all kinds of new uses for soy, and the little ballast bean soon became a star. Now let's take a closer look at the science of these little legumes. Legumes are plants in the pea family. Think clover, soybeans, and even alfalfa. Plants and animals need nitrogen. Why? Because it's one of the building blocks of proteins and DNA, which are essential for life. On Earth, we have plenty of nitrogen. In fact, nearly 80% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. But it's not a form that we can use. We sure can't eat air. But some bacteria can convert nitrogen from the atmosphere into nitrogen in the soil that in turn can be taken up by plants, then transferred to animals that eat plants. Cool, huh? Animals release nitrogen in their waste. When plants and animals die, decomposers break down their remains and return their nitrogen back to the soil. Humans can also manufacture usable forms of nitrogen from nitrogen in the atmosphere to make synthetic fertilizers. That's pretty neat and all, but what I really want to know is how do alfalfa and soybeans make nitrogen? So what you really want to find out is how do plants do this thing called nitrogen fixation? Learn more about the science of these leafy legumes. Log on to intotheoutdoors.org. Fire up your tractor, because next, we're going to find out how to grow soy and what it's like to work on a soy farm. Don't go away. There's more Into the Outdoors. And now back, Into the Outdoors. Soy is a type of legume that plays a vital role in replenishing our soils with nutrients like nitrogen. These little legumes form a symbiotic relationship or a beneficial partnership with certain bacteria that convert atmospheric nitrogen into a form that plants can use. This rhizobium bacterium enters the roots of the legume and forms root nodules or bumps on the roots of the soybean. Inside the nodule, these tiny bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. Ammonia is then converted by other soil bacteria into forms of nitrogen the plants can use, like nitrate and nitrite. These bacteria need an oxygen-free environment to do their work. The legume scoops up any oxygen that can slow down the work of the bacteria. So the legume gives the bacteria food with their roots and the right oxygen-free conditions inside the root nodule. In turn, the bacteria give the plant usable nitrogen so it can grow and reproduce. Some of that extra nitrogen even makes its way back into the soil surrounding the plant. Wait! What happens to all that stored nitrogen in the plants when animals or humans eat the plant? It goes from producers to consumers to decomposers throughout the food chain. <laughs> it gets recycled. Whoa! There's no ballast in these little beans! I'll say, but how do you suppose they grow these things? Come on, bean boy, it's time to start farming. Whoa! Thanks for letting me help out here on the soybean farm. So what's the first thing we do? Well, in the spring, the first thing we do is put some fertilizer on the ground, and then uh, sometimes we lightly work it, but we mostly no-till. And then this machine here will actually put the seed in the ground. I've never heard of this no-till deal before. What does it do? Well, it's not doing anything, it's lack of doing. So that means we go into the residue from the previous year and actually plant right through that residue. Oh, I get it. I wonder if my parents would let me know till cleaning my bedroom. You let me know how that works. <laughs> well, here's a timeline, Josh. Normally about the 1st of May, we'd like to put the seed in the ground. And it takes, say, 14 days for it to come out of the ground, depending upon the weather. Around the longest day of the year, you know, June 20th, we're gonna start seeing flowers come on this plant. Now, that, that's the beginning of the reproduction cycle. Around August 1st, we're gonna start actually seeing little pods form. And then with uh, good weather, we'll see the pods get bigger and bigger. And I'd say, you know, about September 1st, the plant is gonna be very close to maturity. But then after maturity, we've gotta let it dry down because uh, normally we harvest the soybean at 13% moisture. So that'll take us to about the end of September before we actually start combining. Oh, cool. I 
want to be a soybean farmer because then I get to do nothing from May until October. I wish it was quite that simple because now we've got herbicide and we've got a uh, crop scout weekly to make sure we don't have insects or fungus or lots of other little predators that could be out in the soils. Insects? What kind of insects would eat a soybean? Oh, there's many insects. Pesky bugs. Uh, soybean beetles normally attack earlier in the year, aphids in the middle of the summer when it's hot and dry, and spider mites when it's really dry. I don't really understand this nitrogen fixation. So when the plant gets fairly mature, little nodules will form on the roots. And that's where the bacteria, the rhizobia, will actually live. And that's where the nitrogen is made and it's stored in the ground. And then once the, the plant is harvested, that nitrogen will stay in the ground for a crop that'll be planted the following year. Oh, that's like a symbiotic relationship. Yes, it is. <laughs> this soybean farming is easy. I've got a bushel of seeds that I'm ready to plant. What can I expect to get out of it from a good farm? We normally plant 1.1 bushels per acre, and that will average 50 to 60 bushel return. Wow. That's a pretty good return. That's a lot of bushels. Yes, it is. Okay, here's a math quiz for you. I have 2,600 beans per pound. I have 50 pounds in a bag, and I'm going to get about 50 times the yield of one bag. How many beans am I gonna get out of the field when I harvest in the fall? I wanna plant some soybeans. Where do we start? Well, first we have to load the planter. We've got some settings to set in the tractor. It's a great day for planting, let's go. Whoa, is that a cool display or what? Yeah, I'm gonna get this all set up for you here. I think today we're gonna to run north and south, so I'll get this punched in for you and it'll take care of itself. Autopilot, sweet! Stick with us. Next, we're gonna discover what roles kids play living and working on a soybean farm. Don't go away, there's more Into the Outdoors. And now back, Into the Outdoors. While Josh was planting soy, I wanted to find out what it was like for kids to live on a soy farm. And that one over there is the, one of the biggest ones. His name is Show Off because he has a pink nose. And you can tell that one is Madagascar, and then the all white one is Tasty. It's really fun taking care of them, I guess, because we let them out, and their favorite food is like r ripped up bread and marshmallows. Marshmallows. <laughs> Do you like to work with animals? It's pretty fun, because I know I probably want to be a vet when I grow up, because animals are a big part of my life. So this is the green room where we test all the moisture and make the tickets. So this is like the, see it says one measure moisture, and so it kind of has all the directions on the main menu. So it's the measure moisture, so, so you can select your grain. Like for this plaster, we would be probably be doing soybeans. So we would take a bag of soybean, and here's the little cup, and we would pour it in here, and and then we would press this, and then it would test it, and then the number, the moisture would come up on the screen, and then if you would press down, and all of it would come up. What if there's too much moisture? It would probably, since it's already cut, we would still, we would put it in the wet bin. Like, we have bin one for wet corn, bin two wet corn, bin three dry corn, bin four beans. Whoa, those farm kids were pretty impressive with their science and math and with helping on the farm. This soy story was getting bigger all the time. I have 2,600 beans per pound. I have 50 pounds in a bag, and I'm going to get about 50 times the yield of one bag. How many beans am I gonna get out of the field when I harvest in the fall? Now that you know what soy puts back into the soil, it makes you wonder, what are the environmental advantages of farming soybeans? Well, since soybeans put nitrogen into the soil, soybean farming takes less fertilizer, which is good for the environment. With all the products made using soy, it kind of makes you wonder, where do all the soy proteins and oils fit into the food chain? Well, for starters, the nitrogen fixation in the legumes is an important biological pathway for nitrogen to make its way into the food chain. 
Then there's all that protein packed into a soybean, almost 38%. And it's all that protein that makes it such a valuable part of the food chain. Did you know that fish farms raise the fish we eat by using soy protein? Sea bass, salmon, shrimp, catfish, tilapia, trout, flounder, and many others are raised using soy protein. That reduces the pressure on wild fish populations while offering an affordable and sustainable alternative to netting fish from the ocean. But the biggie with soybeans is its use in livestock feed. Did you know that about 85% of the world's soybean crops are processed in a meal and used for animal feed? We take that for granted, but it's changing food production and consumption in much of the world. In places like China, they used to eat a lot of soybean foods because they didn't produce meat products for all the people there. But today, soybeans are changing that. As a prime animal food, it allows more people to now add more meat to their diet. This bean may look small, but it has a double whammy composition, which makes it both useful for food consumption and industry. After doing some research, we learned about the composition of soy. Did you know that a soybean is made up of about 38% protein and 18% oil? Or, any guesses on how we use the soy protein in oil? We can extract the oil from the soybean and use it to fry food or run an engine. Cooking oil and biodiesel are both made from soy. Also, soy oils are starting to replace some industrial uses of petroleum, like biofuels and polymers. Once the oil is extracted, the protein that remains can be processed into feed for livestock. Some soy is also processed directly for human consumption. And as you go shopping, you'll discover that the list of food products with soy in them is getting bigger all the time. Since scientists have started to develop new ways to use soybean to make other foods, it makes me wonder, maybe you can make a whole meal using stuff where soy was the main ingredient of the food chain. Why wonder? I say we head to the kitchen and get some expert help. Want some fun and simple recipes you can cook at home and flavor with soy sauce? Log on to IntoTheOutdoors.org. Stay with us. Next, we're headed into the kitchen to whip up a mouth-watering meal, all from soy. Don't go away, there's more Into the Outdoors. And now back, Into the Outdoors. Welcome to our Soy Savvy Kitchen. We're here today with soy expert Linda Funk to make a full meal using all soy-related products. So let's take a look at how we're going to start off in the morning. Do you ever have smoothies? Yeah, let's, I love smoothies. Great, let's try to make a tofu smoothie. We're gonna take a package of frozen strawberries, two cups of orange juice. It looks good already. <laughs> then we're gonna blend that up. Now, what we're gonna do is add the tofu. And we take one package of the soft silken tofu. And that's all there is. Wow, that was pretty easy. And a great way to start your morning. Great way to start the morning because you're adding all of that protein. And soy protein has no cholesterol and very low in saturated fat. So it's heart healthy. Mmm, that tastes really good. I'm gonna have my dad start drinking some of this. If we want it to keep its shape, we use the water-packed tofu, because it's much firmer. But it's tofu, and then you start saying, how do I want to do it? Probably cut it up in cubes, we can stir fry it, we can put it in sandwiches, we can do lots of things with it. So we're going to make a great dip. Emma, this is so simple. It would be great for you to come home from school and make this and have a really healthy snack. Because are you hungry when you come home? Yeah. yeah, and chips and dips is one of my favorite snacks. So this is so easy. All you do, put the tofu in, let's blend it up. Blend it. That's perfect. Then we're going to take a seasoning packet. I chose ranch because every kid loves ranch dressing. 
So I'm going to add the ranch flavoring. All we do is add that, blend again. And that's it. Let's take our vegetables and pour it right in. Quick and easy, and you're ready to go. So let's try it. Take your favorite vegetable. What do you like? I love cucumbers. cucumbers. <laughs> Me too. Now let's try some of that edamame. Interesting name. Different, lots of different ways to say it, but it's edamame. Edamame. It's a funny word. Where'd they come up with it? It's from Japan, and it really means their bean. But what you have to know about edamame is it comes in either shelled or in the pot. Can you eat the outside pot? You can't. It is not edible. But it's the coolest thing to have a snack with edamame in the pot. If I can't eat the pot, what part am I supposed to eat? You actually eat the little soybean inside. And the pot is just a fun way for kids to enjoy food and actually play with your food a little bit. So all you do is you take the pod, start to open it up, and voila! Do I eat it plain? You can eat it plain. Sometimes what we do is also sprinkle a little salt on, on the pods, and then you get a little saltiness also when you're eating it. And there you go. And then just take and eat. Mmm! Kind of a cross between a green bean and a pea. I like both. <laughs> so it's all in one. And it's packed with protein. Wait till I tell my mom that I learned how to play with my food. <laughs> Wraps are so popular these days, and you can put anything you want in a wrap. So what I did was took the tofu, cut it up, put it in a plastic bag, and added some of that balsamic vinegar dressing to it, and let it marinate because tofu is like a sponge. It soaks up flavors. So really you have to say, what kind of flavor do I want it to taste like? And then add that seasoning. Of these things right here, what is not a soy food? Chicken. You're absolutely right, but do you know they eat a lot of soy protein? So in no. reality, it's that soy family. Let's put some lettuce on the base. Then we can either do the edamame by itself or our salad block. Ah, uh, you know what? You can take three or four and wrap it up. Takes a little practice, actually, <laughs> so it all stays in. But then this is your wrap. This is as easy as it gets when it comes to a sandwich. Again, adding lots of protein and lots of flavor. And we have to remember, Food is fun, so have fun with your food and enjoy it. Finally, we made this entire meal with soy-related products. But these are just a few examples of the products we use every day that are made from soybeans. So the next time you pass a soybean field, remember this little bean and how it's reshaped farming, industry, and the foods we eat. See you next time on another adventure into the outdoors. and find one of those magic beans. I don't know about that, Josh. <laughs> the following organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series.